Hi, today we are going to unbox the Motorola D5 Plus. First of all, you need to check the seal. This should be intact, like I have already removed it, but in your case, this should be intact. This box contains a transceiver of 3.8 volt battery, a charger, and a battery door as well as a headset, data cable, and memory card. So let's start with the unboxing. Here comes our transceiver, the mobile set. All right. All right. So we have a safety film over here. Okay. So this one is the IME I number, which you can use to track the phone and all this stuff. This is the location where your SIM card will go. This is your memory card, which is already been inserted. And this is the slot where the battery pins would work. Okay. Let's keep it aside for a while. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, we have the charger, okay, the cable for it, okay. So this is a multi-purpose cable which you can use to charge your mobile as well as you can use it to connect it to your computer for various purposes like uh, um, changing the firmware and all other updates and stuff, all right. So you can just have a look at it like what kind of, okay, they have packed it pretty well. So this would go into the mobile and this would go into the computer or in our case, it would probably go to the charger. All right, sorry. Sorry, I got a little aggressive over there. Well, it doesn't matter. So <clears throat> this is how it's gonna work. This is our charger is ready and it can work just like this one over here. Let's get on with the earphones. Uh, well, I've heard that the earphones are not as good as an Apple iPod, but yeah, it's I think good enough for having a good music. Other than that, you can use this 3.5 mm jack over here. This is where, as you can see, this is properly sealed. This, which is a specialty of Motorola D5 Plus, to get each and every jack being properly sealed. Like this is the one for the earphones. All right, then we have one for charger over here. All right, and we have the power switch over here. All right. Other than that, these are the volume up and down keys. And we do not have any physical button on the front screen. All right, these are just the Android keys, which are touch keys, which you can use for various purposes, which we are gonna come across very soon. So first of all, let's remove the SD card. We do not need it. Okay, I'll get removed, I'll remove it later. This is the back lid, which we are going to use. All right. Okay, so this lid is also having a speciality. I'll just show it to you. All right. Okay, first of all, it is being glued properly. It is having some kind of a glue on it. As you can see, yeah, here it is. So this glue is used to seal the phone properly. Okay, in case uh, you drop it into water or something like that. So this will make sure that it doesn't enter or affect your phone. This is the battery we were talking about. This is 1650, right? And we have this, okay, where was the voltage? Our voltage is also specified somewhere. Okay, this is the battery number, which you, is used to recognize the battery uniquely, model number and all that. Motorola manufactured it. You can also check the hologram over here. Other than that, we have some manual, okay? This is a quite colorful and useful manual you can use, right? Okay, we can read it over later. Other than that, we have some safety information which contains all the information about the battery usage, how to use it, what to do, what not to do, how to make emergency calls. We have a nice card from Motor Blur to keep your details safe and in case you forget them, you can just use it, all right? This Motorblur account can be used to store your online data like your contacts details, like, sorry, contact, uh, phone book contacts and all that. This is water resistance warning, thing special about that. Okay, then we have this warranty book. This contains a list of uh, uh, all the centers which you can uh, visit and all the states and all the cities over there, like you can see, it is being organized according to the states. Okay, so you can find the nearest center and just go over there to get your warranty. Okay, the box is empty. We're done with the box. Let's move on with the assembly. We have the battery, we have the lid. 
Okay, so first of all, I need to remove the SD card. All right. Okay, so the SD card is that. Now I'm gonna insert the SIM card. Pause, please. Uh, SIM. Okay, so we have the SIM card. Now, as you can see, this is a button pushing, push button. This is used to get the SIM card out. To insert it, just make sure that it matches the pattern over here and properly insert it. Okay, the SIM card is inside. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, as you can see, these pins are gonna match these pins. So, just match them and close them. We are done with the assembly. Now, the back flip. As I told you, this is having a glue over it. So, we're gonna have to remove it properly, right? Okay, here it comes out like this, right? And we are done with the glue, right? Okay, this is the Motorola logo, this is for the camera, and this is the main functionality I was talking about. This locks the phone properly, as you can see over here. Here is a lock, so it is not just a normal flap which will get into the sockets it is a proper lock when like when you place it over here okay you have to press it and then lock it now this is properly locked as you can see in the logo okay so the phone is properly locked now I can close all these ports right we don't need them open right now okay this is quite hard okay it has to be hard because you do already know what's the functionality for this right just close these things and so let's switch off the switch on the phone. Okay, here's the welcome screen. Let's get rid of it. Okay, let's see the boot time. Okay, it's gonna take some time to boot. Uh, till then, let me tell you about the soft keys. This is for the menu. Okay, this is the home key. This is the back key, and this is the search key. These logos are. <clears throat> pretty explanatory by them this by this by themselves okay as you can see this is also having some nut bolts over here which uh, might look uh, like which might not be that attractive okay but this makes the phone safe okay so the um, screen is rotating by its own I'm gonna go use United Kingdom English we start the phone setup now the sim card that I have inserted has an active data plan so I'm gonna choose that thing and now it is gonna check for data connectivity so as you can see my mobile has already got a message from Vodafone you will need a motor blur account to access the phone which I'm gonna register for okay you can also go for a previous account I mean you can always access your old account if you have a Motorola phone like if you had some a Motorola phone earlier and you have this new one you can just use the old account as well okay so I'm gonna use an existing account I'm gonna choose this option and next okay I'm gonna enter my details as you can see I think the swipe feature yeah swipe feature is activated but my name is not in the dictionary yet so what I'll do is I'll just tap the keys alright and to enter into the dictionary I just need to press space and it gives me an option to add it to the dictionary okay I pressed it twice so okay now Kushal is added into the dictionary now next time I need to enter my name I just need to swap it like this alright so I think I didn't add it to the dictionary I'm gonna have to do it again alright this is my name I press the space this is the option add it to dictionary let's try it again alright I got the name by swiping uh, you can use this to edit alright now again the other part is not over there so I'm just gonna tap it okay and uh, this is an email ID okay you can use any of the email IDs to register for a multiple account and then just tap in and go on okay so we have I've entered the password just press the back key to get rid of the keyboard press next the phone radio is enabled to connect to the network okay mm -hmm. all right they are saying there is some error okay okay so we have switched on the phone this is the welcome screen this is a Android welcome app okay see all your apps you touch okay this is a tutorial six-step tutorial you can go through it will tell you how to add a widget and stuff 
So first of all, how to remove a widget from your screen? Like this is an icon. You know, there. So there are two things, widgets and icons. First of all, let's remove this icon. Just keep your finger pressed and move it to the trash, which is on the uppermost part of the screen. Okay, these are the, this is a widget because a widget is something that will be pulling the data from the network again and again by using the push services like this. If I have been adding a social network, then the latest update will be shown over here. And I can also put a sh sh shortcut to call a contact or to message a contact over here. All right, I can put any of the contacts over here. Other than that, we have all those uh, useful things like task manager, alarm and all those things, okay? So we have this camera button, which will give you the camera. Okay, now auto location tag can be used to tag your photographs automatically by using your GPS satellites or using your wireless networks as well. You have to agree to a certain rules and all those things. Okay, so this is like the camera. Mm -hmm. You can click anything you like. Just put it in the same. You have this shutter button over here. There is no physical key for this. You just have to place your finger on this and press it once. All right. So I do not have an SD card right now, so it is not clicking a photograph, but this is how it is done. Other than that, you can always change the settings, like you can add the effects. There are many various effects like black and white, the negative, the sepia, the solaris, all right, the red, the green, and of course the blue. Okay, other than the effects, you can also add the scenes, like you can check, you can select a particular scene if you know you are clicking a portrait or landscape or a moving person or it's a night vision or a sunset or something. Other than that, you have the option to switch on or off the flash, okay? And you can always switch to the video mode. This phone records VG videos. Okay, so you can press this button. Again, it is not recording because I have not inserted a card. But as you can see, uh, my location tagging is on. So this icon is for that. This shows me that I'm recording a QVG video. There are two modes. I don't remember the other one's name. And this will say the tag. And um, you can add various tags on your own. So this was about the camera. Other than that, you can access the Android market. Or you can access the maps. Okay, so in the Android market, you're going to have to sign in for a Google account then only you can use it, so be ready for it. And also, if you have selected double security for your Google account, you're gonna have to add a specific key for that. Well, that's a separate issue. You have the calendar over here. You can have, you are having a lot of calendars, like a Google calendar would also be available as soon as you attach your Google account over here. Okay, so you can add any of the events by giving them all the details like the date and all that stuff okay this was about the calendar and you have as you can see this is a very handy google search just tap over here type whatever you want to search for and yes the google results are right in front of you okay so that's how it is done and this is the basic working of the phone as you have already seen anytime you want to navigate to the home screen just press the home button and here we are back and as you can see i use the browser so when i need to go back over there just access the browser and my work my is still going on so the application doesn't exit completely it is just going to a dormant state other than that you can always access the gmail and all this stuff and there is no limit to applications as you already know okay that's pretty much about the phone i hope you like this demo other than that uh, yeah this is the camera 5 megapixel camera okay we have a quite an impressive led light over here which might not be able to take pictures for distant objects but yeah as far as near objects are concerned it, it is enough for you okay so okay i'm gonna connect my account and get back to you later on till then have fun